Okay. Often we pray for patience, and that means that we're also simultaneously praying for hardships in our lives to help us develop that quality of patience. God uses those circumstances to help us develop patience, as well as other characteristics in our lives. When we pray for transformation, when we pray that God would come into our lives through the Holy Spirit and begin to transform us into who he wants us to be, we simultaneously pray that we will experience difficulties because we will need to let go of all of the things which we hold on to so dearly. Our finances, our family, all the things that kind of take, uh, kind of take over our lives, the possessions which we have. And in that sense, we need to let go of those. Jesus tells us that if anyone would come after me, let them deny themselves, take up their cross daily and follow me. Well, that also means that I have to let go of that, that false self that I've built up, that defense mechanism around myself, my ego, and allow the Holy Spirit to take away those layers and cut down to my true self how I was originally created. In doing that, I have to go through great difficulties and trials. So I pray, when I pray for transformation, I pray simultaneously for those things to take place. Jesus wants us to love him better than anything else. Even he says to us, if you love father or mother, brothers or sisters, children, anything more than me, you're not worthy of the kingdom of God. He even says to us in the parable of the rich fool, that we're a fool if we think that our riches can ever take the place of a rich relationship with God. And so as we move into this holy week, celebrating each of the days and the significance of each one, the entrance of Jesus into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday, riding the donkey in accordance with the prophetic messages, his visiting in the temple, talking with his disciples, preparing for the time of going to the upper room, to celebrate the Last Supper, and then going to the Garden of Gethsemane, and then the horrid experiences of that Thursday night and the crucifixion on Friday, the quiet time on Saturday, until 6 p.m. for us in our culture when we start the celebration of the great vigil of Easter, a glorious time, my favorite service of the entire year. And then of course, the celebration of Easter, the great resurrection. We don't want to hurry to Easter. We want to live each day as we move through Holy Week to truly experience the meaning and the depth and the significance of each of those days. Let us spend this time that we have. Many of us are working from home, doing different things. Let us spend this time listening to morning prayer, evening prayer, other services, sharing on Sunday the celebration of the liturgy, other events which we can do online, but also doing our individual times of prayer, Bible study, or just sitting quietly and listening to the Holy Spirit speak to us so that that might be a rich, and deeply meaningful experience. Jesus talks to us about peace and worry. In John 14, he talks about the idea I'm leaving you with a gift, peace of mind and heart, not peace as the world gives, but peace which passes all understanding. And then in Philippians 4, 6, and 7, Paul talks about the idea, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all that he's done. Jesus says, I'm leaving you with a gift. St. Paul says, here's how to open the gift. And so instead of being overcome with anxiety and worry and fear. Let us turn to Jesus to truly experience the gift of his peace by praying, talking with the Heavenly Father, inviting the Holy Spirit into our lives to totally fill us in every way. And instead of worry, we will find ourselves filled with the peace of Christ and with living water. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen.